Father, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for laying down last night. And thank you for waking us up this morning. Closed and in our right mind. I'm not saying we were demon possessed, but we are thankful to be here today. We are thankful for all of your many blessings. Lord, you've been good to us. You bought us from a mighty long ways. And I believe you're going to carry us on. Even farther. So take us, take us now into your presence, Lord. You promised to be with us. And we are taking you at your word today. We ask that you would word these, speak through these lips of clay. And use us for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I said yes to the Lord. I dare you to say yes to the Lord today. Yes, Lord. Come on, get it in your spirit. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Come on, fill the room with a yes, Lord, today. Yes, Lord. Come on, out of your spirit. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just have your way today. Have your way today. We can't do nothing without you. We're failures without you. But with you, we can do all things. All things are possible through you. So now, Lord, take us into your word and into your presence. And you get the glory out of our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Y'all might be seated. I've had some good days And I've had some hill to climb I've had some weary days And some lonely nights but when I look around, yeah, I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. I, I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road So I ask the question, Lord why, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So I just say, thank you, Lord. Yeah. 
years away and turn my midnights into day. So instead of complaining, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the good times, Jesus. And I thank you for the bad times, too. to the Word of God today. I'm not going to be up here very long, but I intend to speak the words what God gave me. I've been studying and reading. Brother Eric put this on me because he know I don't stand still. <laughs> and so I had to put this on, but I think that, that's a good thing right here. Man, I can... I could even shout if I want to. And nothing get in my way. How many of y'all love the Lord today? I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm not just talking about saying it. I'm talking about really loving him. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about with a uh, hey! Somebody got that. See, a lot of people talk it, but when it actually comes down, if God don't give them what they want, then where that love go? But even when you don't get what you want, God still, I love you. And that's what we got to be today. We got to be in falling in love. Somebody put out a song one time that said, Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that I ever did. And I want to tell you today, praise God, I fell in love with him one day. And it's the best thing that ever happened to me. We're going to talk about today David, praise God. 
David a man after God's own heart. Some people say that David, reason why he was uh, a man after God's own heart was because uh, he had a repentant heart. And I don't doubt that. David did have a repentant heart because David did some things that uh, you and I will never do. But he had something else was in there. He was in love with God. I just believe in my soul that he was in love with God. Not only did he love God, but he loved the things of God. He loved the people of God. And I believe that's one of the reasons why he was a man after God's own heart. Because I know that God loves us. Praise God. God loves us. You know, David could have killed Saul. But he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. He had a love for Saul. I mean, you know, and Saul was his enemy. Because Saul had messed up. He had done, got out of God's plan. And God has a plan for all of our lives. He had a plan for Saul's life, but Saul messed up. And guess what? I found out on yesterday, he got fired. David had took his position. As a young boy, a young boy, a young boy, praise God. Let's read some of the word of God and just see what, what's happening here. I noticed lately that a lot of the lessons and you go places, we went yesterday, and they were talking about David. David spent time with God. As a matter of fact, most of your psalms were written by David. David was in love with God. And well, let me tell y'all something. That will be the best thing that will ever happen to you if you fall in love with God. I'm talking about people, I'm talking to people that nowadays, they say, I love the Lord. And as soon as something unpleasant come into their life, they fall out with God. Lord, where are you? Where were you when I needed you? But David was one. He had, he seen some God do things in his early life because he was a shepherd. And she tended sheep. You know what? I, I, I said something one time and I believe it. God uses you in places they've been using you all the time. When God used David at a young age, he was tending sheep. All he wanted him to do was tend sheep. His sheep. We are his sheep. Yes, we are. And he wanted him to tend sheep. So God uses us sometimes in areas we're already working for him. And we don't even realize it. You already been working for God, doing what he is. Some of y'all out there witnessing day in and day out, telling people about Jesus. And you didn't even know you were working for God. Hey, ain't he a good God? He, 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 he does things sometimes we don't understand. But he knows what he's doing. Praise God. Sometimes we don't understand what he's doing. But he knows what he's doing. And he's going to bring you out. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you can't even see down the road. You can't see which way, ah, oh, Lord, this is an ending, a oh, never-ending battle. 
but God got the situation in control. Do y'all believe that today? Ah, he know what he's doing. What we got to do is trust God when we can't trace him. When you don't understand, Lord, I don't understand what's going on. I don't even know. Sometimes it'll make you, if, if you're living for God, it'll make you question your own salvation. Lord, am I a child of God? You promised me you were going to be with me always, even to the end of the world. And I look around and I, I can't see you. Where are you, Lord? But he's been with us all the time. All we got to do is learn how to trust him. Take him at his word. Lean on him. He's a good leaning post. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. You know you can lean on God. You can lean on him. You can depend on him. You can take him at his word because he ain't going to leave you by yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell him thank you. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Praise God. So we're going to talk about David today. A young man, praise God. Let me get rid of this thing. You don't want to have it. Praise God. Now, y'all don't be surprised if he go off, because I tried to cut it off. But, but God is truly a good God. Yeah. Let's read a little bit. Yesterday, they put me in a dark place. I didn't have my glasses on. Woo! Lord, help me. I can even read the scripture. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab. Now, these were, now Eliab was David's oldest son. Eliab should have been anointed the king. But David, he, he David, but, but saw Samuel Sometimes God don't always give you everything. He told Samuel to go down to Jesse's house and anoint. Samuel had seven brothers beside him, but David had seven brothers. And go down there and anoint one of Jesse's boys as a king. Now, the, where I started reading Eliab, was a good looking young man. But God don't look at looks. God looks at the heart. That's what we're going to talk about today is what's in your heart? What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Have you ever asked that question? I'm not talking about that um, pump inside of your chest that pumps your blood through your body. I'm talking about the heart of man, the innermost being, your innermost being. That's the heart that the Bible is speaking about. And so whatever is in there that's why we need to be regenerated because we have things in our heart. You know, the Lord has to work on us. You know, just because he saves us, it's not over with. God's got to do a work in our lives. Some of us, some of us, we still, we talk too much. God's got to work on that. Some of us, we still got tempers. And some of us, we're still doing some of the things we used to do. 
And God has to purge us. Purge us means he just got to clean you up. And I don't know about you, but I want God to clean me up. Come on. Ah, if you don't want, you don't want nothing from God, you ain't going to get nothing. But I want all that the Lord have for me. And I believe that, praise God, anything in me that shouldn't be there, God will clean me up. Do y'all believe that today? I believe he'll take out everything that shouldn't be and make everything right. In this lesson, praise God, he went down and he found uh, Eliab. Eliab was good looking. Good looking young man. Matter of fact, he thought he should be king himself. Eliab. And I'm just going to Shammah. Shammah, he said, no, it's something about an, he, the oil, that oil just wasn't flowing as Samuel was anointing, get ready to anoint him, that all wasn't there. He said, don't you have some more boys? He said, yeah, I got one more son down there, tending sheep. Down there, tending sheep. And while down there, praise God, uh, David was a, go get him. Bring, bring him up here. And boy, when he come over and he pulled that oil, that oil started flowing. Yes. Praise God. That, that's, that's what we need, oil. Yes. We need God to pour that oil on us, yes. to anoint us for service, yes. to use us for his glory. Yes. Let the oil flow, God. Yes. Let it flow. And so I'm looking at, next came Shema. I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of paraphrase. Shema was one of the next oldest one. Noah. Abinadad was the next one. Noah. You got to have another son. He went down and got David. You know what? It's some jobs that only you can do. God has saved you for a purpose. A purpose, praise God, we all got purpose in here. A purpose. You know, there are some, some, some areas that you can go and some areas and some people that you can help that I can't help. Amen. That's true. Only you can. And God wants to use you. But first of all, you're going to have to know what's in that heart. Right. Are you doing this? Uh, many people are doing it for fame, fortune, and oh, I'm somebody now. Want people to carry, uh, 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 stand up when I come, when my, when my presence come around, because I am somebody. God can't use you. You are full of yourself. And God don't want nobody that's full of themselves. He wants somebody that's humble. And so he takes us through an, a, a, a change in our life. He's changing me right now. I got some stuff in me. I've been saved a long time. I've been saved nearly 30 some years, but he's still pulling stuff out of me. Whee! Some of y'all got some stuff need to be pulled out of y'all too. Huh? You might not want to admit it, but some of us got some stuff. Sometimes we can't get along with people. Sometimes you got an ugly attitude. God can't use that. God wants somebody that's humble, easy to get along with. Somebody that will give their everything to be used by God. Now let's look at something else. I was looking at, after Saul got fired, yeah, he got fired. God sent an evil spirit to be a boy. I said, well, God allowed it, but the Bible said that he gave Saul an evil spirit. And the spirit that he gave him would come upon him. 
and it wouldn't leave, but it said, it's a, a boy down there that plays a harp. And when he plays that harp, that spirit will leave. David have, see that's what y'all got to, the reason I'm saying this because we got to be careful of the music we listen to. Oh, y'all didn't, didn't get that. Some of the music have a spirit behind it. And David played the harp and the spirit would leave up off of Saul. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all ever listen to some music and boy, you get to listen to old Luther Vandruff and whoo. What's his name? What's the one that's saying sexual healing? Whoo. Marvin Gaye. Whoo. It make you feel good, don't it? Man, it makes something spoil, boil up inside of you. You didn't even know you had it. It's some, it's some, some music you can listen to, <laughs> make you depressed. Yeah. I used to, when I was in the world, I used to, couldn't stand hard rock. That hard rock, man, that don't make no sense. But when I got high, and when I got loaded, man, that sounds pretty good. Are y'all listening to me? Praise God, that began to make sense. Praise God. So music has a spirit. A spirit. We got to be careful what we listen to. What we take into our heart. Remember I told y'all, it's the innermost being. That's what God wants. He wants the innermost being inside of you. He wants the best of you. So praise God, he got to clean that heart up. Get all that stuff out that ain't, ain't like him. All of that stuff that's keeping you from coming closer to him. Y'all know y'all got some things, some of, let's say us. We got some things in us that, praise God, are keeping us bound down, keeping us from going forward, keeping us from doing the will of God. And God, you know one thing I like about God? He don't just throw you away. Yeah. Hey, boy, this boy ain't gonna never learn. Huh. But he takes time out with us. Yeah. After a while, he realized he gonna get the message. After a while, he gonna get the message. He gonna do what I tell him to do. Yes. Yeah, he gonna do what I tell him to do. And he spends time with us, working with us, pulling us. Sometimes he have to drag us. But any way to get him, all he's doing is bringing you closer to him. Oh yeah, that's what he's doing. He wants to bring us into his presence. And what the, the Bible says, in his presence is fullness of joy. I want to be in his presence. But I, I don't know about you, but I found out that you can get anything you need. Sometimes you don't even need money. And you can get things from God. Just being in his presence. Let's look at a little bit more of this. Praise God. David was anointed. Praise God. He was anointed king. Yes, he was. Praise God. The Lord had sought a man after his own heart, and the Lord commanded him to be captain over his people, because those had not kept, for, for thou hast kept that which the Lord commanded thee. David did what God wanted him to do. Remember when Saul went down there, and he's like, a lot of us. We go down there, and we, we say, oh yeah, I love the Lord. Well, what happens when you, somebody doesn't drop their billfold? Got 
full of money. He said, I love the Lord. Woo, a blessing. Just <laughs> fell in my love. And then you open up that bill folder. He's got his driving license in there. His name and address is all that's in there. What are you supposed to do with that money? That big old blessing you just got. Woohoo! Some of us said that was my blessing. You know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to turn that money back to that person. That's what you when you love somebody. When you love the Lord, I wouldn't want to think about a little old bill folder keeping me from being in the presence of God. Think about it. So what I do, I got to do the right things. You know what? God wants us to do the right thing. Oh yeah. You got to have the love of God down in your heart. And not, not just saying it, but meaning it. I love the Lord. And I'm not going to let anything stop me. Uh, anything that's going to hinder me from being close to him. Amen. Oh, you can talk about me all you want to. But I'm not going to let that stop me from doing what the Lord say do. Amen. I'm not going to let that stop me from getting closer to the Lord. Amen. You know what? I found out that you can get as close to the Lord as you want to get. Some of us just refuse to, uh, to yield ourselves to the Lord. Do you know you can yield yourself to the Lord and the more you yield, you know what, that's what being filled with the Holy Ghost is all about. Praise God, yielding yourself, getting rid of yourself, and getting more of the Lord. The more you give yourself to Him, the more He'll come in. I know I got that one right. The more you give yourself to Him, the more He'll come in. And brother, when He comes in, he will make something out of you. You thought you wasn't nothing. But God can make something out of you that he can use for his glory. We all accept that? It's from the heart that man believes unto righteousness. Oh, yes. You got to believe it from your heart. Praise God. I want to go to another scripture. I'm almost through. Praise God. I want to go to Matthew. If y'all would, y'all have it. Matthew, the 12th chapter of Matthew. Starting at the 32nd, 33rd verse. Woo, praise God. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So what's in the heart? What you have in the heart? Praise God. Praise God. Matthew the 12th. We're going to find out, praise God, what's in the heart. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. Out of the heart, praise God. That's why we need to have the heart. The heart has to be regenerated. Praise God. Regenerated just means it needs to be changed. You know, you can't, you can't serve the Lord with the heart that you, uh, you, you, down through the years, you've been bought. Oh, I did it my way. But you know what? You know, God can't use that. He need to, he need to put a heart in you. This heart that he want to put in you is a heart of flesh. Praise God. A heart that, praise God, will be obedient, uh, an obedient heart. A heart that, praise God, will go where he tell you to go. Do what he tell you to do. He's working on you. Why don't you let him work on you? What's in that heart? Finally, my brother, now, at the 12th chapter, out of there, I say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Whoo! Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Somebody said that, praise God, they got out there and they cussed somebody out. Oh, that slipped. No, it didn't slip. That's what's in your heart. Y'all hear what I'm saying? 
That's what was in your heart all the time. Praise God. And you know what? God need to get that out of you. He need to clean you up from that. Because one of these days, he might have you up here preaching his word. And guess what? You might have some slippers. Oh, y'all, I'm sorry. That slipped out. No, God can't use that. God can't use that. He need to get that stuff out of you. Amen. Praise God. He's working. Why don't we let him work? Yeah. What's in our heart? What's in your heart? Do you know what's supposed to be in our heart? Love. 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 And you know what? I'm so, I'm so, I'm so ashamed sometimes. We done took that word, love, and just made it nasty. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Love is God. Love is of God. Love. God so loved the world. Love. But now we done took that thing and we done started. Uh, man, love is any two people that, uh, that have a feeling for each other. And, and uh, you know, it don't make no difference what uh, you are. Uh, you can be a man. Two men can love each other. You got to get all that mess out of you. Hmm? God need to clean that up. Praise God. Praise God. God don't want to use you as no homosexual. Well, I don't got graphic now. Praise God. God don't use uh, uh, homosexual. I don't care how good you can play. I don't care how good you can sing. Praise God. You need to get that mess out of you. God done told us, praise God. Your part, you might be saying and all that, but you're going to end up in the lake. Huh? So what we need to do is get ourselves purged. Purge us. Purge us again, Lord. Purge and prune us, Lord. Take everything in me that shouldn't be. Take it out and straighten me, Lord. I want to be right. I want to be holy. Look, that's what it's all about. Praise God. So you can tell, praise God. So it slipped out. Yeah, it slipped out. But it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Huh? You shouldn't be bearing apples and oranges at the same time. An orange shouldn't be setting up under an apple tree. Are y'all listening to me? Praise God. You say you're a child of God, you ought to act like a child of God. Come on here, y'all. Children of God, praise God. They stand at God call you. He separated you from the world. People of the God, we are peculiar people. We're funny acting people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't act like the world acts. We are peculiar because we've been set aside for God's use. Yes, we have. We've been set aside for God's work. And praise God. But God wants to first clean us out. What else? What's in your heart? Sometimes God's got to get in our thoughts. Let me read something from the Philippians, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse. Sometimes you even think wrong. Are y'all listening to me? Sometimes we think wrong, we act wrong, we do wrong, and we want to lay our religion down. I'm going to lay it down, Lord, and I'm going to pick it up after I get through whooping this girl behind. Hmm? <laughs> Don't you know you can't do that? You got to think right. Not only act right, you got to live right. I mean, it ain't no one-time thing. It's a lifetime thing. Praise God, you got to live. Praise God. It, sometimes you're going to get your feelings hurt. There's going to be people sitting up in there just don't like you. You know that? Yes. There's going to be people just don't like you. They don't like you. They don't like 
they don't like your mama. They don't like nothing about you. But praise God, that can't, you can't let that stop you. Yeah, I'm going to lay my religion down. Bro, you better, better hold on to your religion. If you lay your religion down and go back to get it, it might not be there. Are y'all listening to me? Hey, hold on to that religion. Don't lay it down. Praise God, I'm going to put it down on the shelf and then I'm going to pick it up after a while we get through. Yeah, after I get through taking care of it. Whee! <laughs> For Philippians, the fourth chapter, I'm almost through, y'all, and I promise. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. That's what should be in your heart. Think on, think on those things. Let, let, praise God. Lord, I spend, I spend time working on... See, you know what we want to do? What we want to do is we want to work on everybody else. We want to shovel it. That word is for sister. Who nanny? Yeah, that word as for brother ever ready. But you know what the Lord wants us to do? Instead of shoveling, we need to have a rake. Raking it in. Lord, that's for me. That's for me. I ain't where I want to be. But I ain't where I used to be. But I want to be what you want me to be. Praise God. And if you get that in your heart, praise God, God will change your life. I want everybody to stand. I'm through. I hope y'all got something out of that. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? If anything, if it don't, if it, it's not of God, you need to get rid of it. And you know what the beautiful thing about it is? You can ask God and he'll take it out. That's the beautiful thing. Maybe I'll help somebody. Maybe somebody needs to, to come for prayer today because you want your heart right. Hey Amen. It's time out for just shucking and jiving, playing like, oh yeah. Man, I, I notice now people getting their praise on and going right back out doing the things that they were doing. You can't do that. Praise God. You got to get your heart right and stay right. With our bill one today, praise God. They said, brother, I just want you to pray for me. Pray for me that I'll be what God would have me to be. Praise God. God is truly a good God. We don't have a one. I made the appeal. Praise God. I hope everybody in here hard is right with God. Pray for me.